Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to pay special tribute to Mariam and to all the organisers um, for inviting me to, sh to be here today and to all my fellow panellists. But before I begin, I too would like to take a moment to pay tribute to all the women, the children and the men who have lost their lives to the f and to their families that have been left behind, to all those who are living under oppressive and violent regimes across the world as a result of fundamentalist and extremist ideologies and conflicts across the world. When I chose the titles, and I'm going to show my age, but hopefully not my taste in music, um, it's the opening line of a Tammy Wynette song. I'll explain the slide in a moment. Um, <coughs> sometimes it's hard to be a woman. And I thought, actually, sometimes it's bloody hard to be a Muslim as well, but in a very different vein, and I'll go on to explain that. And I've, I hate labels, but today, for today's purposes only, and for this very short moment, I'm going to wear the label of a believer someone of Muslim heritage. And I hear so much every day in all the work that I do about how Muslims are marginalised, how they suffer Islamophobia, how they, you know, um, social deprivation in disease, all of that. But we need to get some balance, we being all of us, as well as Muslims within the community. This is the country that has given Malala Yousafzai refuge and given her a platform from which to speak to the rest of the world. This is the country that has given Junaid Jamshed, who was an Islamist from Pakistan, refuge from the very blasphemy laws that he would subject other people to, and he has refuge in this country. This is the country that has given people like me the platform for today, and sorry for being emotional. Um, and you just have to look at the representations of Muslim people on our TV screens, in our sports arenas, um, amongst our politicians of some dubious hues. Um, so yes, there are some pockets of society, as there are with every single community that are subject to some really, um, you know, the damaging consequences of poverty, of racism. But there are others who are shining examples of success, and we need to get that balance back. So as I've said, I'm of Muslim heritage, and that heritage has informed, it's framed, and it's shaped so much of who I am, but it is not all of who I am. But there are times when I wonder why the hell I stay in this religion. Why would anyone want to take on the label of being a Muslim in today's world? I'm not going to launch into a defense of Islam or Islamic practices. I'm not going to start presenting my thoughts or even the thoughts of other more progressive, secular or feminist interpretations of Islam. I'm not going to recall a glorious Islamic past when things were progressive and radical and how they should be, at least <coughs> according to some. I'm not even going to claim an authentic version of Islam. If you want that, there are other people who can give you that, but it certainly will not come from me. So the question is, why do I find it hard to be a Muslim in today's world? Just turn on your TV screens. The atrocities that are taking place, and God, they are not in my name, or in any understanding I have of the faith that my mother raised me in. The Islamist narrative is nothing less than a bastardization of that faith, and it seeks to destroy the rich cultural um, and linguistic heritage of all forms of Islam across the world. And it seeks to destroy anyone who doesn't adhere to those norms and practices that have emanated from Saudi Arabia and from that specific version of Islam that is Wahhabism. But it isn't just about Wahhabi Islam. We need to also shift from that. The extremist fundamentalist ideologies permeate all sects of Islam. And I can say all of this because I'm in the UK. I'm not subject to apostasy laws. I'm not subject to blasphemy laws. I'm in a much safer place. But I don't see myself or vast swathes of my community cloaked in that victim narrative that the Islamists propagate every single day. The brutality that the Islamists have exacted across the world in the past few months, the countless murders of Muslims and non-Muslims alike, the floggings, the beheadings, the, the suicide bombings using children, the kidnappings, the rapes. Are these new? We're all sitting back in shock and horror. It's 2015. 
This has been going on for at least the past 30 or 40 years. The only thing that is new or feels new to me is the horrific, brutal resurrection and the capture and slavery and forced conversions of the Yazidi women and, and the Christian girls in Nigeria. But even is that really new? Have we forgotten about Darfur? The ISIS manifesto that came out yesterday, the newspapers were covered with the shock and horror of it. I will go as quickly as I can, Peter. But again, it's nothing new. Just look at what the Ayatollahs were saying in Iran back in 1979. I'm not going to make any trite statements about um, trite or cliched statements of condemnation. As I said, the brutalities are not new. The reason I think, or the reason I feel, actually, that being a Muslim is hard today is that, I, is that I, along with many others, are having to face a really difficult personal truth. Have we colluded, have Muslims who label themselves as secular, as liberal, as feminist, as progressive, as radical, have we colluded with the Islamists? When the Sunnis are murdering Shias, there is silence. When the Shias are murdering Sunnis, we sit back in silence. When the Sunnis and the Shias and the Emdis are all, are all suffering, there remains silence. They're all bloody silent when it's women and children who are dying. So that, for me, the, the kind of the journey to 2015 is about a call, to, a call not to arms, because I don't want to get into that violent language, but a call to action for all of us. Because by being silent, we are colluding. By silencing each other, by silencing those who stand up, like Mariam and saying, je suis Charlie, and labeling those people as Islamophobes and racist, we are colluding with those Islamists. I get labeled a kuffar all the time, and I frankly don't give a shit anymore. Um, we have to start looking at, is, at, at what is happening, and this is where I'm going to get back to the bit in the panel, and I'm going to be very quick, but I do need to make this point. Pragna talks about shariification by stealth. I label it as Islamization by stealth. Islamism is being normalized. It's being, the Islamist narrative is pumped into homes across this country via satellite channels based here and overseas every <coughs> single day. The Arabification of our language and heritage, particularly as someone from the subcontinent, is eroding centuries of culture, custom, and tradition. Our children are segregated and educated in separate religious schools where their, their contact with anyone else is so limited. Being a Muslim is what we are told that we are. It's the sum total of who we are. Muslim communities make lots of noise. We have countless speakers who get on TV and go, you know, oh, isn't it terrible? I'm just so despondent, just so despondent. And this normalization really came home to me last year in September, between September and November, when we were shown the images of the Union Jack hijab and the poppy hijab. This was presented as a really positive image, a demonstration of the patriotism of British mu Muslims, but it left me shocked and cold. The hijab has now become the defining symbol of Muslim women. The Islamist dress codes are now accepted as the authentic presentation of Muslim women. I refuse and will refuse to wear to my dying day a hijab. I refuse to apologize for my gender. This is just you know, one example, and there are countless others. We have to stop colluding. We have to start speaking up. This is not about shouting louder. This is not about saying this isn't the real Islam. Islam is actually better than this. This is about every single one of us. It's people dying overseas at the moment in huge numbers. Muslims mainly dying at the hands of Muslims. It won't be long before they're knocking on our doors. Thank you.